Hi, welcome to Under the Surface. My name's Annalie Maley. I'm here with Rajon Tucker, or Tuck, as I hear you like to be called. Today, we are going to be talking about your life, pretty much, just some of the things you've experienced. I've got a bunch of random questions I'm going to throw at you, but really, I just want to know more about you. And as cliche as it sounds, we're going to dive under the surface and get to know who you are. So, oh, good. I oh, want to start by... Tell us about who you are away from the basketball court. Like on your off days, what do you do? Like what is what does an off day look like for you? Um, off day for me, um, usually sleep a lot, um, <laughs> get up, watch endless shows. Me and my cousins, we just watch all types of shows from like Suits to Blind Spot, just all different types of stuff. Good doctor. Mm-hmm. Um play some video games every now and then. I get bored with that kind of easily. Um, yeah. And I'm a big foodie. Like, I love to eat. So I try to go find different little places to eat and try. So that's basically, like, my off day. And then probably come get some shots, too. I can't yeah, stay away from the gym. So I'm the same. I'm the same. I, you know, they say that Melbourne is, like, the food capital of the world, like, one of the best places to find food of all types. Have you found an area in Melbourne yet that you're like, this is the spot. Like this is where I need to be eating all of my meals. Um I think the spot that I've like went to the most is Chapelli's. It's like my it's like because I eat late sometimes. So it's like the only spot that has like good food that's like open late. So I, I tend to go there like I know all the people there every time I come in there, they're like, my guy was good. So <laughs> I'm like a regular there. So it's, yeah, that's probably my spot right now. Yeah, that's how you know you found a good spot when they know your order and they know what you want as yeah. soon as you walk in. Like the kitchen guys are like pointing at you. Facts. Like, yeah. As soon as we walk in, they like, you need a table in the back? <laughs> yeah. like, all right, we got you. So is your cousin still here with you? Did he travel? Does he travel with you usually? Or like, how does that work? Yeah, so um, he's also my manager. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so yeah. like, uh, we've been... We've just met and just figured out we was cousins maybe like three going on four years ago. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. And ever since, like, we've, like, found each other, like, been like two peas in the pod. So um, he just came over here. He's been with me the whole time. Uh, didn't want to come over to a new country kind of by myself. Yeah. And it kind of helps that he's my manager, too. So he yeah. plays basketball. Um Shout out to him. He just signed uh, Chelsea, the big V team out here. So um, he'll be hooping too. So it's, it's big. That's awesome. I want you to rewind for a second. <laughs> How did you – like, so was he your manager first and then you figured out that you guys were cousins? Or like how – I need you to – how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my first year when I was with uh, the Utah Jazz, mm-hmm. um, I had a teammate that I was like – me and him were cool, um, mm-hmm. close. We knew each other. He grew up with him. So when the pandemic hit, like when people were able to start flying, he had came in just to work out because he was trying to go pro too, So, which is my cousin. So at the time, I didn't know. So he comes in and we hoop a couple of times and, you know, we chop it up. But it was really just on some like – we're cool. Yeah, like, yeah. So uh, one day um, I have like this little going away party because we we're about to go to the bubble. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, like you always in the house with bro and his girl. Like, man, come over here. Like we're going to drink. We'll have fun. We're going to chop it up. Like whatever. So one of my other boys that I grew up with who was also on the team is Small World. Yeah. So he's uh, he gets there. And I guess they had a conversation in the car about about the situation. He's like, no, don't tell him. Like, because his mom had called him. was like, yo, you got a cousin out there. And he thought, <laughs> he thought it was like his boy, but it was me. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, nah, he just signed a deal. Like, I'm not about to be weird to tell him yeah. I'm his cousin. Yeah. <laughs> so we get there and we all get to drinking. And he's like, yo, I'm about to tell him. And, you know, I'm ear hustling. I'm like, tell me what? Tell who what? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, nah, chill, chill. He's like, yo, this is your cousin. <laughs> And it was like a movie scene, like everything was like, yeah. and everybody just looked. And I was like, how you my cousin, bro? Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, like, so we we figured it out. And he was like, yeah, so my last name is Davey, but mm-hmm. I had to change it because of school mm-hmm. and paperwork and all this. And he was like, but my real last name is McNeely, which is my mom's maiden name. Mm-hmm. But nobody knows that. Everybody knows her as Miss Tucker, Miss yeah. Tucker, Miss Tucker. So when he said that, I was like. Oh, no, I already know what it is. So, like, we got on the phone the next day, ended up calls, and he's, like, my second cousin, like, super close. So, it was, like, it was crazy. And ever since then, like, we've been attached. Like, so, yeah, it's a super cool story. Like, when we tell everybody, they never realize that we haven't known each other our whole lives. So, 
Yeah, you kind of just like skated past that when you were talking about it. You're like, yeah, my manager who just happens to be my cousin, but I didn't know that. And then yeah. you kind of just kept going. I mean, it's cool that you can have someone that is your family and stuff kind of come out with you to places to play. Has he come with you to most of the places that you play or this is the first time he's really done that? Um, So this is really like the first actual place that he's like came. Um, so when I was in Utah, he was kind of already in Utah. Mm -hmm. So we were just kind of together anyways. Then when I went to Philly, he came out later in the season cause he was still in Utah doing some stuff, like mm -hmm. business stuff out there uh, with like my brand and clothing brand and everything out mm -hmm. there. Um, and then with Milwaukee, he was still out in Utah, still doing some business stuff, yeah. came out later and then when I decided to come over here, I was just kind of like, hey, bro, like, what's up? You, you trying to go to Australia? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. So it was more so a business plan for, like, us to, like, get everything done out here. And maybe, like, he just did get a contract for him to go play because I know that was That's still so an cool. aspiration for him. So I was like, yeah, with you being right in front of him, like – yeah that'll help that's really. super cool i um i guess that's like a good part for me to segue into like your family and i i had listened to an interview that you had done uh, a couple months ago and you speak really highly of your family and your family co uh, connection and your relationship with your mom tell me about your family and like how much that means to you and like what your family dynamic is like like talk to me about that oh family is everything to me um it's first on my list um well, second below God, but, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's definitely high. But um, me and my mom uh, had a lot of struggles growing up and my little brother. Um, pops left when I was like nine years old. So my brother was two. Mom worked like three jobs. So that kid aspect for me kind of like went away super early. So um, I'm more like the father of the house, the, the pops of the house. So like me and my mom have like a friend husband wife type relationship yeah. where she calls like yo what you think about this or hey you doing this and then she kind of let me just mm -hmm. like experience thing and learn it on my own and my brother calls me pops like that's how close a relationship we have so mm -hmm. um yeah so i mean like i i didn't grow up super rough but we had super hard times where i mean ramen noodles every night trying mm -hmm. to figure out like i might let my brother have my food because he's still hungry um nice lights off uh wearing the same clothes like so yeah so it was it was good it humbled me um kept me grounded uh gave me a reason to work hard um played football for a long time and um my dad played football too so i didn't really want to do that so fell in love with basketball and it was like took off from there that's cool i like that i like that um hearing those kind of stories about you it's interesting how we can see that in the way that you play basketball like now and yeah. your career. You can see that like you've had to go through stuff and you're driven and that kind of usually gets instilled in us by like something that's happened when we're younger. Right. Um, if like your brother or your mom had to describe you as like a young kid, <laughs> how would they describe you? Like were you, you know, uh, you said you had to grow up quick, but were you like super serious getting stuff done all the time or were you goofy? Like who were you as a kid like how would people describe you um super goofy super loving when like you get to know me like but that that first initial is super like assertive like upfront. um don't re really sugarcoat things mm -hmm. uh you you might think i'm a little mean when you first get to know me just because like i had to put that wall up just to mm -hmm. make sure everybody around me and myself kept myself straight so um but like everybody like they see me play on the court and they're like Oh, he's arrogant. He, um, he show Tommy. He just wants mm. to do this and do that. And it's like when you get to know me off the court, it's like, whoa, wait, hold yeah. on, like you're completely opposite. Like I love to joke, love to have fun. Mm -hmm. I'm laughing, smiling all the time. So yeah, definitely a one of those goofy kids that was into a lot of stuff. Like my mom, I used to almost get a beating every day. <laughs> 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 just, but by just doing stuff like it was one story about my mom that she had told me i had gotten in trouble when she told me to go sit and like had a little red rocking chair yeah she was like <laughs> yo go sit in the corner and don't move your uh, butt out the seat and they were watching me and next thing they know like i had some toys over there and they didn't know how i got the toys over there so like then they look again i got more toys over there so they like wait hold on let me let me watch and see what he's doing 
I was carrying the oh. rocking chair <laughs> on my butt, walking around, getting stuff, sitting there. Before they knew it, I was in front of the TV <laughs> in the rocking chair. And they're like, yo, what are you doing? I looked. I was like, you said not to get my butt out the chair. <laughs> like, I did. I had my butt in the chair the whole time. So I was one of those kids. Like, I was trying to find loopholes to yeah. do anything. Yeah. So, yeah. You need to be like, you got to specify the rules more specify. if you don't want me to move. Yeah. If you don't want me to move. If you said keep my feet on the ground, it would have been a different Facts. story. If you would have told me not to move out this spot, <laughs> okay, that's different. You said don't get my butt out the chair. It yeah. did not get out the chair. I promise you, I had it on my butt the whole time. <laughs> oh, that's really funny, actually. I, you know, I think that, um, like, and I, I was actually just having this conversation with someone the other day, like, the way that uh, athletes usually getting into, like, high school basketball and stuff, we take things very literally, yeah. right? So, like, coach says, set a screen with your foot facing this way. You're like, I got to cheat it. I got to angle this way. Right. I've got to do this and this. And and we tend to like take information like it is gospel and it has to be done a certain way. Black and white. <laughs> yeah, literally. I don't, I, don't, I don't know at what point that becomes something that we, we follow or like even if it's something that we never grow out of. It just seems to be, I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Nah, definitely. Definitely. I, I definitely agree with you on that. I know a lot of people like even my cousins sometimes he's like, bro, like take everything so literally i'm like how am i supposed to take it that's what you said I like know, i know i know i know um so i had a question about like i kind of touched on it before about when you travel like it's nice having a piece of your family with you mm. but you having traveled so much and being away from your family whether it's college whether it's here whether it's your time in the nba how do you keep that sense of like family connection and maybe it's just like a sense of like where you grew up and who you are when you're always in different places like how does that how do you manage to take bits of home with you wherever you go um big shout out to my mom she instilled just like a self-confidence and a self-awareness in me early on where no matter where i'm at no matter who i'm around just to be me and you know take it or leave it um I know that I never have like ill intentions or anything of that nature. So just um, how she raised me just to be genuine guy, um, loving, caring about the people that surround you, like treat everybody the way you want to be treated until otherwise, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, never be a fool. That's what she always told yeah. me. But um, at the same time, like everybody wants love. You never know the type of day somebody having or the way you can impact somebody's life. So um, I take that. Uh, very literally mm -hmm. and um, anybody that comes up to me um, talks to me uh, I give them the same love that I would want to receive if it was on the back end so I think that's how my mom just instilled in me just to be that type of person that's cool I like that that travels with you then you know like the the stuff that is instilled in you by your family like that's with you always right. because you carry yourself that way yeah. that's super cool I think that that segues me really well to like my next kind of line of questions but i i i wanted to ask you like your time in the nba you're surrounded by like these amazing athletes all the time you're in these really high intensity environments like you've got like superstars around you like how how the hell do you stay like you how do you stay your how is your sense of identity kept intact when your your ego is being challenged in so many directions yeah. like how how do you manage to do that on a day-to-day -day basis or like if you didn't how did you work towards that um it's hard um i think it comes with a bit of maturity um and just knowing your surroundings uh where you could still be yourself but in the light not step on toes um so uh, just being around guys, you learn a lot of different things, just personalities. Uh, everybody's not the same. Uh, you have, like, guys like Giannis who are, like, super humble. They don't really say too much. Like, and you got other, like, superstar guys that are just like, nah, I know who I am, and you either take it or leave it. So mm -hmm. um, just knowing your personnel in a sense. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's super hard. Uh, it's tough uh, mentally um, just going into those situations, and it's super political where it's like, I may be better than this guy, but they're paying him 200 mil and they're paying yeah. me three mil. Yeah. Like I might not ever get an opportunity, but yeah. you got to just stay consistent and uh, keep working and not let that like dawn on you about like your work ethic or how you go about your day and just enjoying the game. Cause sometimes it, it can take the joy out of it because it's kind of like you're worrying about the wrong things at times. It's just like, 
man, I want to play. Like, why am I not playing? Why is this not happening? Why is this not happening? But sometimes you just got to like wait your turn in a sense yeah. and just like keep going until that opportunity comes because it's a lot about opportunities and uh, when you get those and just taking advantage of that. Yeah, I think the like that kind of term opportunity, that gets thrown around a lot because I think that – I mean, people that say they don't get enough opportunities or there's not enough opportunities coming their way. Sometimes that's just, I, I like to think that opportunity comes from everything that you have put in the work. Like right. opportunity doesn't come just because someone's like, here's an opportunity. Yeah. Like, right, right. You get it because you worked for it and because it presented itself at a time where you were working so hard for so long. And I, I, I guess the the work behind the success, right? Nah, like yeah. the, the acknowledgement there isn't a lot. And it's not there enough of the time. Mm -hmm. For you, is there, was there a moment where you felt like things are actually starting to align and I've been working my ass off for so long and here's, here's my moment. This is my opportunity. Can you remember a certain time where that might have been something for you? Um, now, yeah. honestly, if uh, we're being like really honest, um, I was just having this, it's funny, we was just having this conversation the other day with my cousin is like, we go through life and like we're such a now generation where we want everything now like everything has to be now when i want it like i feel like i need this now and sometimes you might not necessarily be ready for the opportunities that you seek so um just like getting my shot better uh polishing my game being able to use my left and right hand the same way like just those different things or just being able to like take the criticism when you play bad and still being able to come out the next game and have that same confidence. Um, just like, I think like now just being here and having those opportunities to grow and um, getting the pub that I'm getting out here and the love that I'm getting out here. It's just like, okay, like I'm figuring it out. Like night in and night out, like good shooting day, get in the gym, go shoot, get your reps. Bad shooting day, get in the gym. Like the consistency is how you get your opportunities and, and things start to pan out. So like right now I could kind of see like, okay, like, okay, this is where I'm at. This is what I got to do. So yeah, I think here's where I kind of found, found myself for real in basketball. That's super cool. That's awesome that it's like kind of coming together for you here. Yeah. I mean, Australia is a great place to do many it things, is. but it is. it is it is really cool because like obviously the community really love you and they really get around you. And I I guess like my question is like when you have this massive part of yourself that is basketball, right? Like mm -hmm. you, well, like I mean, I can say it for myself too. Like we work so hard and we all we do is basketball for a lot of our time that we have. How do you separate yourself from more than a basketball player? Like there's you and then there's basketball, but how do you not let that overwhelm <laughs> who you are? Yo, it's so crazy. Like all the conversations that we're having right now, I'm telling you like I, me and Eli were literally having these conversations yeah. maybe like a week ago because I was yeah. just talking to him like, yo, like I don't know what I would do like after basketball, bro. Yeah. Like I've just indulged myself so much in basketball. It's like, what else do I really like to do? Yeah. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, but for me, like, I've kind of found little things to do. Like, I make music. So mm -hmm. um, I'll go to the studio and make music and just kind of talk about some of the things that I've been through, things that I've seen. And that kind of gives me an outlet outside of being on the court. Um, uh, going out to eat, having conversations like this with Eli. Like I said to you earlier, mm -hmm. I was like, we was thinking about having a podcast where we could just talk about different things and and get that out. Uh, the clothing brand, like I'm mm -hmm. really into clothes and fashion and, and different things of that nature. So like just figuring everything out, taking that slowly step by step while still being able to do what I do on the court. So um, I feel like just finding different things that you like to do that has nothing to do with sports. Yeah. Like it's hard yeah. because, you know, we spend – eight o'clock to two o'clock. Yeah. Once you get out of there, you got to go eat, got to get your rest. And then you want to get back in the gym yeah. just cause you still trying to perfect your craft. So mm -hmm. it's like, we don't really have the time, but like, like we always say, you make time for the things that you want. So like, if you want to figure yourself out, you have to take those, those hours and those, those minutes in the day to kind of like sit there and ponder with yourself on what you want to do. So yeah, it's crazy. We was just having yeah. a conversation. Yeah. It's, it's really hard for a lot of basketball players, like that question, because we see ourselves as like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm a basketball player. Right. It's like, and? And what else? And what else? Like, right. what else? What else are you? And I think that for a lot of people, that's a really hard question to answer. I feel like in 
general, like for a lot of people, it's <laughs> yeah. a hard question. Like once you found your path or your career path, it's like, all right, yeah, this is what I like to do. But like some people like to read, some mm -hmm. people like to explore. Like, so it's like, what do I really like to do that's not bringing me in money is yeah. the reason why I'm doing this. Like what, what other things that can help me cope? Like, so yeah. Yeah. Take I, the stress off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you know, we can see that you, you play basketball with like such a high intensity passion. Like it's really cool to watch. And I think that's Appreciate in it. my opinion, that's the only way you should play basketball like Definitely. with passion. And I think that, um, the way I describe that feeling in those moments is like, you're not thinking about anything else other than what is right in front of you and Being it makes moment. you yell it makes like I, I have no business flexing when i score <laughs> I, I flex i'm like what am i flexing you know i have no business doing that like absolutely none and like it can it can just like completely suck you into that moment and there's not a lot of things in my life that where i get that same kind of level of passion and drive yeah the the opposite edge to that is sometimes and this is my next question is like because you are such a highly passionate person do you ever feel like because of the highs you also have the lows like you cannot have that such high drive without also having the low side as well oh definitely um I've definitely went through my rough pasture, patches of like being depressed in the sense of just like me feeling like things aren't going my way or I'm not playing up to the potential that I thought I should be playing. Um, uh, yeah, and it's like you're you're so like in tune with yourself and you want to be so successful. And you want to be so great at like the game that you say that you love and that you put so much effort and time into. And when things are like not going the way that you want them to go, it's like – it's heartbreaking in the sense it's like you having your first love and mm -hmm. like all of a sudden she goes cheats on you. It's yeah. like, what is going on? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's hard. Like you have those highs, you have those lows, but um, X has helped me out a lot with that. It was just like, yo, never too high, never too low. Like mm -hmm. even on your highest highs, like still know that you got to do more. Your lowest lows still know that you're good. Like it happens. Like it's life. Like everything's not gonna go right. So yeah. So definitely, it's 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 hard to maintain. Like when you when you're such a driven person, you yeah. have such intensity, and you just love what you do. Like those bad days mm -hmm. really be bad. Yeah. So like it's good to have like family and people around you to help like pull you up out of that. Like because they see it. Like when you're in it, it's hard to see the good or just the different stuff that's actually really going on around you. But like. Yeah, to have them pull you out and be like, yo, nah, you good. Like, this is what you're doing good, though. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay. Like, keep going, bro. So. What do you think as, uh, let's say, support staff or organizations or whatever that that people can do better, whether it's the coaches, teammates, I don't really know what it has to be from an organizational standpoint that people can implement to make sure they're uh, – I don't know, monitoring, taking care of and allowing the space for us to have those lows and to um, allow us to be humans, not just like robot basketball players that perform all the time. And like, what do you think needs to change in order for that to be kind of widely ex accepted in sport? Um, It's a hard question, but I feel like just them like really actually caring about us. Mm -hmm. like, you feel what I'm saying? Like if it was their son or their daughter that was out here playing and they felt a type of way their son or their daughter felt a type of way about what was going on they would take that time to be like hey how can i really help you like what things that can i do to really help you not just come to you one time and be like hey like how can i help you and you're like no nah, i'm good because obviously like people aren't really trying to talk about the things that they're going through mm -hmm. so like you have to constantly and show that interest that you really want to help them. So um, I really just think like just the care factor mm -hmm. um, will, will play a big part because um, just like your family, like if you're going through something, your mom is going to ask oh, you yeah. every day, <laughs> yeah. every second. Yo, what's wrong with you? You want to talk? You need help? You need this? You need that? Oh, all right. 30 minutes later. Why are you still looking like that? Like, you, you feel what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like that'll go a long way of it being more than just a business or they're just bringing me in money or this is I need you to play basketball. Like, yeah, yeah we play basketball and this is what we're great at. But, like, 
we're humans. Like yeah. we still have a lot of things going on outside of basketball, whether it's because of basketball, whether it's because of other things that's going on, like love life, family things, mm -hmm. uh, personal things that you're trying to do it. So yeah, I think that's that'll be the biggest thing, just taking the business side so much out of it and put more in the care factor. I like that. I like that. If there's any GMs listening, take that on board. I think that <laughs> I think that's a great pitch. And I I guess that um my next kind of question, uh, kind of on the same wavelength, like I, I think about like how fans and uh, people that watch the game, mm. how they perceive you. What do you think they see when they when they look at you and when they see you in the media or they see you on the court? What do you think they see and what would you like them to see uh, or what would you like them to know about you, I guess? Um, I think we kind of you kind of covered it like. They see a passionate um, kid uh, that's, you know, really energetic, loves the game, um, do anything to win. Just one of those type of players that um, I don't care if I'm scoring 30 points or I have two points, like I'm diving on the ground, I'm getting boards, I'm playing defense, I'm trying to block shots, I'm trying to do everything to make sure that we win. So, um I mean, I kind of pride myself on and off the court of being presentable in a way where it's like, I'm going to show you who I am and you have to accept that. Like, mm -hmm. so um, I feel like what I present on the court, if I feel like that's what I want them to, you know, see me as. And I feel like they have seen it. And that's why everybody is kind of like, oh, nah, he's like, he's like the people's champ. Yeah. Like, cause yeah, I'm gonna get y'all involved too. Cause y'all are here. Like, this is y'all experience too. Like, that's why I said coming in, like, I'm an entertainer at yeah. the same time. Like, I want y'all to have fun just as much as I'm out here having fun. So, yeah, like, that's the point. Yeah. So, I think that's the biggest thing for me, just how I play the game, how I approach it. Um, have fun, but I'm, I'm super serious at the same yeah, time, too. Yeah. Like, whoever's in front of me, I'm trying to kill him for real. Yeah. Like, but at the <laughs> yeah, same time, after I, I do, it's like, yeah, y'all see this? Like, come on, let's have fun. Let's share. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. So, I'm giving high fives, like, where I can. And, you know, it, I think it's, I think it's self-explanatory in that part. Yeah, no, I absolutely. I definitely get that. And it's easy to see that part from you. I wonder like that that drive for you, whatever. Was it ever and not just basketball, maybe it's school, maybe it was in your upbringing, maybe it was college, <clears throat> high school, whatever. Was there a point where you felt like you just didn't fit the mold, the box, like that people were like, we need you to be this. And you were like, but I am not this. And yeah. how are you trying to squish me into this mold that I'm not? Like, what, has there ever been a moment like that for you? All my life. Um, I think it's been a mold where it's, I've never really like fit the mold. I was never the same as everybody like, like we was talking about before we got on here, like I'm not just a shooter, um, not just a driver, I'm not just a playmaker, um, not just a defender, like kind of sort of do it all in a sense. And people try to like, well, you come here on our team, we want you to be a three and D guy. Well, I don't just sit there and shoot threes, bro. Like that's yeah. taken away from my athleticism. That's mm -hmm. taken away from different parts of my game. Like, or, well, we just want you to be a defender and swing the ball and set. Like, I could do that, but, yeah. like, you're not getting my full potential out of that. Or just, like, it's just, like, anything that I did, it was, like, I kind of had to, like, kick the door down. Like, this is who I am. Like, mm -hmm. y'all going to have to accept it. Like, and y'all will get everything out of me by accepting who I am. So, like, yeah. So, it's it's been like that all my life. Um, Just with me, like I said earlier, like, I played football. Mm -hmm. And transitioning late from, like, my 11th grade year being, like, 15, 16 years old playing basketball but never really taking it serious and mm -hmm. having to make that transition to work hard and people telling me like oh nah like you'll just only be an athlete like you'll go d1 because you're an athlete you'll never make it to the league i told my aau coach i told him i said yo I i'll be your first i'll be your first person to play in the league it was all these other older guys in front of me that like everybody was like nah he's nice he's gonna go nah he's nice he's gonna go I was the first one. So it's kind of like those those things right there, like they drive me to keep going because it's like nothing stopped me and there's nothing going to stop me now. Like whatever you put your mind to, like as long as you go for it full wholeheartedly with faith, like you'll get it done. So that drive, like that d doesn't exist in a lot of people. Like no, that is rare. That is so rare. It just, and some people don't, you can't even grasp it when you try to explain that. Where did that like? Were you always like that? That drive? Did 
like as a kid, as like a, a young kid, yeah. did, did that always, was that always there? Um, For me, uh, yeah, so like my dad played football, my mom, she danced, she was always like, she could have made the team, but she decided to dance and she's super competitive, like. I'm talking about OD competitive and my dad is the same way, like super competitive. So I grew up in a, a competitive household for nine years where it was kind of like, if you're going to do something, do it to your best ability. Like my mom used to always tell me, like, I don't care what you do. If you want to go be a janitor, you're going to be the <laughs> best janitor there is. Like you're yeah. going to clean the out the toilets. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're going to make <laughs> yeah. sure everything gets done. So like, yeah. um, I think just like my upbringing and like having to like, not be a kid and take care of my little brother and different things of that nature and people telling me I couldn't do this and it just it just sparked it just had it just lit a fire under me where I'm like nah like nobody's gonna tell me what I can and can't do like I done been through hell as a kid like mm. I got through that like and that's life like being able to be a kid and take care of a kid like and mm. still get what you need to get done like oh no I'm good like can't nobody stop me from doing what I want to do and it's just my mom always instilled that in me like yo go out and do it like don't let nobody tell you nothing you don't even tell yourself that you can't do it like mm. so it's just I, I think I kind of always been like that where it's just had this edge and this chip on my shoulder just about everything like anything we could be playing checkers right now and I'm I'm in the game like so yeah yeah do you ever feel like you missed a part of and i it just organically surf, uh, circled back to your upbringing but do you ever feel like you missed that part where you got to be a kid because you had to be the grown-up of the house like what did you feel like you missed out on that um yeah sometimes but i think it i love who it made me um mm -hmm. i think that's a big reason why i'm like so goofy and like I love to play and joke and all that. Now I think like that kid is still in me because it it never really got out for real. So yeah. um I think that's why like I tell everybody like I love the kids like going out and doing little promos with like the Kmart joint with the kids. It's like that brings me joy because it's kind of like I see the happiness on their face and it's like you desire for like other people to have like things that you didn't have. Just like if you was to have your own kid like you want your kid to have everything that you didn't have. So like, I want my little brother to have everything I didn't have. Like, I want all these other kids to have everything that I didn't have, like, just so they can know, like, okay, like, if Tuck could do it, like, it's it's not that bad for me. Like, I feel like I could do it too. So, um, yeah, I'm, it's just like, yeah, I feel like sometimes it did. And I kind of went back and was like, I wish this would have happened or mm -hmm. I wonder what my life would have been like if this would have happened. But then I look back at it and I'm kind of like, I don't think I would have been like this for real. Just the certain things that happened, like it molded me to who I was or who I am. Yeah, that just completely answered like what I was going to ask you next was, would you change anything about your journey? Yeah. But like, I, I guess it's true. It's like the, if we did change like those small things that end up being big things in our life, right. we, you don't get the person that you are sitting across from you, yeah. which is crazy because it could have like completely tipped you in a different direction of right. your life and we'll never know. But looking at your career, like the, the span of your career, and I kind of say this, like not just your professional career, like mm -hmm. I want you to think about like when you first picked up a ball, like is there any moment for you that you were like, this is the happiest, joyful, best moment that in my career that I can think of, this, this was the moment for me that I was like, I just feel at peace. Or do you think that moment for you hasn't happened yet? Honestly, I think that moment hasn't happened. Um, now, that doesn't go to say, like, I haven't had, like, times in my life where I'm, like, super excited, like, signing my first NBA contract, mm -hmm. super excited. Signing my second one, super excited. Signing here and being here, super excited. Like, um, just the decision to come over here, like, I was super excited about it. Um, and I never really wanted to go overseas. So, like, for me to have that feeling and that, like, comfortability with coming over here, I knew it was the right decision for me. But... Um, I just feel like I have so, so, so much further to go. And that moment of like, okay, this is what it is. It really hasn't, it's not there for me yet. But like, 
it's coming. Yeah. I know it is. So, but for sure, like, yeah. That growth mindset, I guess, like to know that that is always more and the way you can always better yourself. And like, I guess we're never really satisfied. Like that's just yeah. part of being a competitive person. It's yeah. like, I might've done this, but hey, I could do, I could be doing this. Like right. there's right. always more. And like that tends to kind of trickle into other areas of our life as well. And um, are you, when you look forward to the future, mm -hmm. are you a day by day type of person or do you like setting goals in your life? Um, So I do have goals, but also, I'm a day by day person. So um, I feel like it's very important to like know what you want and and go for that. But at the same time, you have to stay in the present because you might miss things to help you get to that goal. If that makes sense. Um, like me and my mom were talking the other night and it was just like, yo, like, don't forget to celebrate the little wins that you have. Like, because those are important too, yeah. just, as, just as much as the bigger goals that you have. So, um, yeah, like definitely a day by day person. I try to approach every day where it's like a bad day because you never know. Like you go like, oh, today's a great day. And then you wake up tomorrow and be like, oh, this is shitty. Yeah. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like yeah. you got to kind of approach each day and like navigate through each day. And and that's like that's the art of life. Like it's going to have obstacles. It's going to be certain things that pop up. But the art of it is just like. Just keep swimming yeah, on my door, just like you know, just yeah. keep going. Yeah. So like, just just navigating through life. So I feel like that day by day mentality is like one of the best. But at the same time, you you have to like you have to know what you want to do. You have to know mm -hmm. what goals you're setting for yourself. Like J Cole said it the best. Like you ain't you ain't for a star. You might land on the moon, but you aim for the moon. Like who knows? You could have been on Pluto somewhere. So like, aim high. Like always aim high. Yeah, outside of outside of basketball, right? What are some of your, I, I don't know, maybe in the next couple of years, like you mentioned your clothing brand mm -hmm. and like music and stuff like that. Do you have any like uh, goals outside of basketball that you're looking forward to the, in the next couple of years? Like something, maybe it's yeah. maybe it's small, maybe it's big, but talk to me about that. Um, I mean, yeah, for sure. Like I want to buy a house. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like that's a big accomplishment for me. Um, I want to finish paying my mom's house off. Uh, it's just like, just little like family things. Uh, other than that, like, I want to get my clothing brand uh, really, like, going. Uh, I feel like I'll start doing more of that in the off season, where now I can kind of, like, have more freedom. I kind of have things set up where it's like, all right, like, this is the direction we want to go. Um, my guy, uh, John Stan, who uh, is making – he makes hats um, and does a lot of different other things. Uh, so he's been helping me kind of you know, on the creative side of things. So, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a couple of things that, like, I have in store, but, you know – Priority one is always priority one. So mm -hmm. I want to take care of that first and make sure that I get to where I want to be in life uh, basketball wise. Yeah. But I definitely have those little things on the side where it's like, all right, this is the main goal, but I want to take this off while I'm still yeah. going. I want to take this off while yeah. I'm still going here. Yeah. You know what's interesting is like uh, the last couple of times I've asked uh, basketball players or athletes actually in general, I spoke to an AFL player the other day about like what their main goal is outside of sport in the next couple of years. Most people say buying a house, yeah. like buying a place. Yeah. And my theory surrounding that is, and maybe it's just, you know, like I just want to buy a house. Like it, that yeah. probably isn't that deep, but right. I, I've got a theory that because we move around so much yeah. from like our home base to whatever, it's traveling to a different school, to college, to then maybe a different college, to yeah. a pro team, like, and then being able to have a space that you know is yours, that yeah. is not moving. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the reason that's uh, the first thing that we want to do because like that was the first thing I wanted to do like it was like I want to buy a house and nah, th this definitely. is important to me and when I when I did I was like oh I just feel so much more relaxed At peace. Yeah, yeah I think like, it's just that sense of stability yeah like, since we're I know for me since I was like 17 I've been gone and I've been moving and never really had that sense of like this is where I'm at. Like, this is what I call home other than, you know, your parents' house. But mm -hmm. once you get out of that space, it's kind of like, all right, like I need something that's mine yeah. and just moving around and bouncing around. Is, you never really have that sense of like, this is mine. This is my stability. Once you buy that house, it's kind of like, I'm going home. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's that sense of like, just relaxation, your yeah. your peace, your your space. So yeah. I think that's probably like, yeah, I think it's that deep. Like, yeah, that's what I 
thing. I think I it's think that so deep too. for sure. I agree with you. Yeah, just being able to even like I know like living out of a bag, going from like college to Man. pro team to pro team, and like really everything that you have is just in this like a couple of bags and a couple of boxes maybe, Thanks. and you can't leave it anywhere. Like I know I know some people have their parents' house that they can leave mm -hmm. things out. I didn't have that luxury that I could just leave things at my parents' house. Right. So I th I think. I really do think that sense of stability and like being like having a place you can come back to between yeah. the hecticness of it all is super super cool. And look, I you've kind of answered a lot of my questions about like uh, your drive and mm. that type of things. But have you ever had a point where you like doubted yourself like for real, like really heavily? And for the people listening, like how did you combat that? Or have you not figured out what that looks like yet? Um. Yeah, uh, I almost quit basketball going into my junior year of college. Um, I just feel like I just felt like it wasn't like it wasn't it for me. Like mm -hmm. I was already a kid who had started playing basketball late and kind of was coming into his own late and. The things I was going through, I had family issues going on, house had burned down. I wasn't really enjoying, like, the school that I was at with the coaches. I just felt like, I don't know, it just, I didn't have the love that I once had for when I was in high school. And I was kind of like, you know, I think I'm about to go play football again. Like, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Like, that was my first passion. Like, I did it because of this reason and not because, like, I really just didn't want to do it anymore. So it's kind of like, yeah, that's what I'm about to do. And, um, you know, I'm I'm a big, like, I'm spiritual. I, I believe in God. And um, it was this one school, Arkansas Little Rock, who had called me and just um, two coaches, uh, Solomon Bozeman, and Wes Flanagan. And they were, like, the first people to call me when I had got out, uh, when I put my name in transfer portal. And my coach had told me, like, yo, you're never going to get another school like this, this, that, and the third. You're going to have to go JUCO. Like, just downplaying the whole situation. So, um they called me and I had already told them like, yeah, I'm gonna come to the school. But that was before I made my decision to like stop playing. So like I had an offer to go play at Purdue for football. Um, they was gonna figure out how to get me on there. I was gonna redshirt the year, play there for football. Um, had a couple other schools too that I visited, but I felt like that would have been the best fit for me. Um, so me being the type of person I am, I was like, uh, I already told him I'm gonna come. So like, <laughs> I'm going to go, like, because yeah. I'm a man of my word. Like, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So yeah. um, even if I already preconceived in my head, like, my mom always told me it's never it's never wrong to go hear somebody out and listen because it might change your mind. Mm -hmm. And I go there, and they're just telling me how they want to develop me and help me with this and how they want to build a team around me and uh, just make me a better basketball player on and off the court, how they were just going to, end, like, just bring me in and indulge themselves in me. And it was just something that I just felt it was like, Yo, like they're telling the truth. Like, yeah. all right, like I'm gonna give basketball one more try. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, it was like I never had like I may have doubts where I'm like, here we go again. But mm -hmm. it's like, nah, like this is what I'm meant to be doing. Like, if I, if it weren't for this, if it weren't for me playing basketball, I wouldn't have met my cousin Eli. Yeah, like you feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's a lot of things yeah. that have I have met and th people and situations I've been in that if I did not continue to be on this path, like. A lot, of th a lot of things would be different. So it's kind of like, okay, like, yeah, like, you get stuck sometimes in that. Is is this the universe or this God telling me to quit? Yeah. Or is it telling me to, you know, just hold on, just keep going? So, uh, yeah, you get caught in those times, but I think that's the day-by-day -day thing where you just kind of like you have those goals set mm -hmm. and you don't you don't deter from them. You just keep going. Like, yeah. no matter. And at the end of the day, like, if you get there, Yo, like we yeah. celebrate, we're gonna yeah. have fun, like, yo, yeah. we did it. Yeah. If you don't, you have no regrets. I think the biggest thing with people is like they have regrets and they have those what if mm -hmm. like moments. And I never have I never want to have a what if moment. So Yeah. Yeah. That that answered my last question about like something that you would change and uh your what if moment. I actually mm -hmm. had that written down. Um my last two questions. One of them is uh 
tell us something about you uh-huh. that we wouldn't expect. Like, what is something <laughs> that we wouldn't know? Like, do you have a party trick or is there like you you like Indian food or you like Rick and Morty? Something mm. like that we, we wouldn't know I about. I do like Rick and yeah. Morty now. Yeah. Like, I'm, that is one of my favorites. Oh, man, I'm, I'm such a Rick and Morty fan. Yeah, like, on a side it's note, like, the last two episodes have been hectic. I'm but talking yeah. about unbelievable. Uh, so, <laughs> um, nah, but uh, uh, for real. Um, so, I mean, I guess one thing that people really don't know about me or like some people have like just like listen to interviews and different things. Um, so, like I told you earlier, my mom owns her own. She danced. Mm-hmm. So, she owns her own dance studio. So, from like 2 to 15, like I danced. You can dance. Yeah. Okay. So, like I did like ballet, jazz, tap, mm-hmm. hip hop. Um, did a little bit of competitive dancing. Um, I even helped her teach a little bit. Uh, so like, I think like that's probably like the biggest thing for me. Like, yeah. oh, any type of music come on, yeah, you might have to just like. If I know people are watching me, I'm like, nah. Yeah, yeah. But like, if you just catch me out the corner, y'all, you like, yo, there he go again. Look at him always dancing. dancing. Like, it don't matter <laughs> what song come on, what type of music. Like, I'm always dancing. So I think like that's like probably like the biggest thing yeah. that people like. If you don't really know me, you wouldn't know unless like I told you. You know, in those step up movies when it starts raining, they start like splashing in the water. Yo, like, I have. <laughs> We'll oh my! I have outside. a I have a video. I swear I have a video. <laughs> I was in Arkansas with my teammates, and um, I forgot the name of the song. It was like whatever y'all do, yeah. y'all go yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, y'all. Yeah. And like it was raining outside, and I swear, like me, like me and my other teammates, like we went outside, like kicking the water, crumping, <laughs> and everything. I swear I have a video. Like after this, I'll show you if I can find it. Like yeah. it's the funniest thing uh-huh. ever. Like, but yeah, like I'm definitely that type. Like, yeah, like I like it for sure. <laughs> Okay. It's like when the cameras are off, you never really know. You never know. Although everyone has a camera on their phone these days, like some of the things that get caught, it's like that should never be seen. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I guess, I mean, I had asked you the question, like, how do you think people see you versus who you actually are? But if you were going to put you, not bas- take basketball aside, okay. who you are, uh-huh. if you can put that into a couple sentences for me. And that's a really hard question. And I didn't set you up for that at all. But like, who, like, who are you in a nutshell? Like values, just tell me who you are. Um, t- uh, I mean, I kind of said it earlier, like super loving, super caring, um, care about everybody. Um, if I can help Everybody in the world, like, I will. I'll give the shirt off my back, the shoes off my feet. Uh, I know you probably heard stories about me just giving kids my shoes that I played in. So, um, uh, super driven, just off the court. Like, I just want to be super successful in anything that I do. Um, uh, but I do have, like, a hard shell about me where it's like, all right, like, I'm not, I'm not taking just anything from anybody. Like, mm-hmm. Cause I don't just give anything to anybody. Like I give myself to people. So it's like, I expect the same in return, um, in a sense. I yeah. know everybody's not going to be exactly like I am, but for the most part, like that's who I am. Like, I just want everybody to just know love and care for each other. And, you know, I feel like everything would be so much better if just everybody just, you know, like you can mind your business, but mm-hmm. at the same time, like you see somebody on the side of the street or just like, you see somebody having a hard time, like talk to them. Yeah. Uh, see how they're doing like it it goes a long way of somebody random just coming up to you asking yo you good how's your day mm-hmm. oh all right bet nice to see you. It, it, it could be that simple yeah. and that, and that really goes can. a long way it like really some can. people just sometimes need that outlet to vent or mm-hmm. just to feel like somebody cares about them where they'll keep going so mm-hmm. i like that that's a good answer that's a really good answer and to to end on something australian mm-hmm. i wanted to know <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to know uh, was Australia what you expected it to be? <laughs> like, I, I know, like, when I was in college, like, some of the questions my college teammates would ask me, I'm like, what? I do, A, I do not have a pet kangaroo. I do not eat, I do not <laughs> eat Vegemite a with a spoon. I, there's no such thing as a drop bear. The spiders don't live in my bed with me. Like, yo, what? I'm not gonna lie, the pet kangaroo is bad <laughs> jokes. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah no (laughs) i would say yeah no um i think like when we got on uh zoom calls when uh we were first talking about me coming over here like the 
first thing I asked was about the animals. Like, because, <laughs> you know, you watch Discovery Channel and, yeah. like, mm-hmm. everything is just about, like, the snakes and the spiders and yeah. the kangaroos and, like, all the, like, extremities of just, yeah. like, Australia. And then you get here and it's kind of like, oh. <laughs> it's a bit different. Yeah, like, this is really, like, it's like a city. It's really, like, super Americanized. Like, you wouldn't, like... <laughs> I don't really see spiders. I see the same spiders that we see in America. Like, I don't really see snakes. Like, I don't just see kangaroos hopping in my front door and knocking on the door or something like that. So it's like, okay, but then you'll go to a place like Darwin or Mm -hmm. you'll go to a place like Cairns or somewhere where it's like super tropical and you like, oh, Uh. nah. (laughs) Okay, now I see what you're talking about. I think in Darwin, I seen a spider like this big. And I was like, Oh no! Nah, like, yeah. I'm going back inside. It was like <laughs> seeing like a big bat, and I was like, "Yo, why is the bat that big?" Like, nah. The, so, those ones are flying foxes, I think. If yeah, I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm like, nah. I'm see, that's why I stay in the crib. <laughs> like, I'm going back inside, but um, like it's still like it's it's amazing to see. Um, I know just like growing up, like I've always been like a Discovery Channel. Like when mm-hmm. I was younger, I wanted to be a doctor. So like I've always kind of like been one of those kids that kind of like to learn and like experience different things so coming over here like seeing kangaroos uh like being around like the different animals and just the different climate is kind of it's kind of cool for yeah. me just to experience all that so yeah have you had someone take you to go see the kangaroos or something yet like because i know there's a couple sanctuaries mm-hmm. where you can go and feed them i, I mean you, you said before about the the things about the kangaroos knocking on the, where i live the kangaroos are everywhere if i live uh-huh. in the country like yeah. i'm up in bendigo we have the kangaroos everywhere that's and not but not in the city right Right. No, yeah. So have you had someone that's going to take you to go do that stuff? And is it on your bucket list? Like, what is your bucket list for Australia, I guess? Like, do you have things you want to do? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, We went up to uh, Ballarat mm-hmm. and they had like the wildlife. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, sanctuary there yeah. where like little kangaroos are hopping around and we got to see like the koalas and mm-hmm. just the different animals, the wallabies, just everything. Yeah. So like... um. Yeah, so I have seen a kangaroo. <laughs> I seen them box a little bit. It was kind of fun. I got a video of that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to like just explore um, Great Barrier Reef, mm-hmm. um, go down to the beaches and Gold Coast, just like just kind of see everything. Um, you know, um, I feel like opportunities like this, not a lot of people are able to go to different countries and kind of like have the freedom to just experience everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it's a huge blessing for like us as athletes to be able to go to different places and kind of like dive into different cultures where we might not have been able to do if like you were just a normal person in Australia where it's like, I'm just here. Yeah. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Or I'm just <laughs> yeah. in America, like yeah. in North Carolina or in New York where it's like, that's all I know. So um, yeah, I feel like I, I definitely have a lot of stuff that I, I do want to do an experience out here before I leave. I mean, I hope you get to experience all of it. There's so much um, about Australia that is just amazing. Yeah, you but have to let me know some stuff to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sure. I, I mean, I tell everyone that comes here to do the far north Queensland thing, mm-hmm. go see the, I mean, it sounds like the animals are not really, but, you know, the crocodiles right. and the, the waterfalls and the everything. But hot I springs. Think, I heard yeah, y'all got yeah, some yeah. good hot springs out here too. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, I, I mean, you, like I said, the community out here has really embraced you. But, I, I mean, the small things that I get excited about, like these conversations mm-hmm. is like, we are always more than just athletes. Right. Where, like, and that is the statement that I will stand by through and through. There's so much more to us. And we've spoken for like an hour and we haven't even scratched the surface. Like I reckon yeah. we could do like another four episodes oh, just to cover phase one, two. Like there, oh, there definitely. should be more. And I, I just, you know, I'll start by saying thank you for sharing some of the things you did. I I, I like I really am excited for people to listen to this and just to get to know you a little bit more sure. outside of the basketball and understand where your drive comes from and, um, you know, your your goofiness and your hard <laughs> exterior and, all you know, all the levels Not of definitely. that. And it, it, it will really be a good listen. And we, we do appreciate it. And I really do mean that, like, this will be great for people to listen to because you have been so successful, not just as an athlete, but as a person you've maintained your integrity throughout every phase of you know your career so far and it's really cool to hear about your family and that type of stuff but thank you again and for everyone listening make sure you tune in on youtube because there's video and stuff and um yeah we'll um 
I can't wait for the next episode. So for thank sure. you. If, you. if you ever want me back on again, we could talk about some other stuff. You want to partner, like Say I'm less. more inclined. Like, <laughs> this was fun. Less. Like I said, it's my first podcast. Uh, so I, I definitely had fun. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. Say less. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>